This is Luke Donald. And I don't know how, to this day, how to figure it out why, Brian there was Wimbledon on 2007. And you know that American clothing designer called Ralph Lauren? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in Friends, I think, yeah. He invited me to his VIP tent at Wimbledon final in 2007. I don't know how I ended up there, but I was. And these were on my drinking days. Since then, I, I hit rock bottom, as they say, and I haven't touched a drop in eight years now. So I got to sit next to Luke Donald. And maybe I had a pin, a pin, pin. Pin, pins, pins. Yeah, pins. You drink pins at Wimbledon, don't you? I call upon you, ladies and gentlemen, all of you from the United Kingdom. Is it not common knowledge that at Wimbledon you eat strawberries and you drink pins? Yes. yes. Well, that was not exactly a resounding yes, but I'm going to have to take that the rest of you are just shy. Fine. I had a few alcoholic beverages and I got to sit next to Luke Donald and I said to Luke Donald, what would you ask a superstar if you got to sit next to him? You'd say, hey, why are you only number 19 on the world golf ranking list? Why is Tiger Woods number one? That's, that's a normal thing. You wouldn't ask about what the weather is like, how the kids, anything like that. You, you go straight to the point, wouldn't you? You go straight in there going, hey, why are you not the best? Because, hey, that's just the way you are, isn't it? Those are the kind of questions you don't really believe in chit chat. You believe in getting in there. Bosh, I want to get something meaningful. I am Danish after all, and chit chat was not something we invented. So I asked Luke Donald, in all seriousness, why are you not number one? And to his grace, he took it in the absolute most beautiful way. He didn't get offended. He said, and I better be careful now because this will go out on YouTube and Luke Donald might actually one day see this. Luke, you said, it's not that Tiger Woods isn't an amazing golfer, because he is. I too am an amazing golfer. In fact, on a good day, I can hit that ball further than Tiger Woods. I can hit it straighter than Tiger Woods. I can putt better than Tiger Woods. But Tiger has something that the rest of us do not have. Tiger Woods has the mind of a goldfish, not from an intelligent point of view, but from a memory point of view. And then he went on to explain that if Tiger Woods and him had made a colossal error on the 15th hole, by the time they had walked over to tee up for the 16th start off, it was as if Tiger Woods had no recollection of the ginormous boo-boo he had just made moments before. While I, Luke Donald, while I, Luke Donald, while I'm tuning up for the 16th, I'm still thinking about the 15th boo-boo. Does that remind you of anything, ladies and gentlemen? Does that remind you of the first big loss you take for the day? It is haunting you the rest of the day. You're chasing that loss all day. Or even worse, you start off well. And then somehow, maybe you made a mistake, maybe you oversized, you lose it all. And instead of just being back to equilibrium, you're thinking, oh my God, I was up so much on the day. It is haunting you the rest of the day. You're no longer trading the market. You're trading your emotions. I am forever grateful. But here's the next part to that story. See, this was in 2007. And Luke Donald was number 17. Five years later, Luke Donald kissed the trophy. He was now number one in the world. And he credited his meteoric rise over the ensuing five years. And it wasn't like those 16 others stood still. They fought for it as well. But somewhere along the way, hey, maybe it was that chance meeting with that drunk Dane he met in Wimbledon in 2007 that made him think, maybe I should begin to play a little less golf. Maybe my focus has just been on golf, 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 and not enough on what am I bringing to the game of golf. 